Hey everybody! In this course, we are going to introduce one of the most used methodologies to conduct a PHA in the oil and gas industry a hazard and operability study, or HAZOP. We'll take a look at when a HAZOP typically comes into play during the life cycle of a project and the benefits of using this methodology as the starting point for a PHA. The detailed design is almost complete. We will have the P&IDs ready by next week, so we should schedule a design review soon. Do we have to do a PHA before design review? No, we do a design review first, so that the overall process design is fairly solid. If we don't do a design review first, the PHA will turn into a design review. If there are major changes in the design, we will need to redo the PHA. Do we even need to do a PHA? The process is very similar to the one we have in operation, and that's been running without any problems for 15 years. This design has some unique conditions, a different control system, and new safety requirements, so we do need a PHA. Besides, I don't think we can assume that just because we have an existing facility, this new one will be safe. I wasn't involved in the last project, but I've seen poor designs get transferred over to new projects without much thought. That's true. What PHA methodology should we use? We could do a what if. It'll help us brainstorm what could go wrong. Whenever I'm in a what if, it always turns into a long, unstructured debate. Maybe we should do a layer of protection analysis, or a LOPA, instead. It has a more explicit decision criterion for whether or not the risk is acceptable. A LOPA only needs to be done for high severity cases. At the stage of the design we are in, I think it's best if we do a HAZOP. We can use that as a starting point to identify high consequence scenarios and it will give us a good overview of the risks in the process. If we need to do a LOPA, a HAZOP will help us identify which cases need to be analysed. Plus the LOPA can be done in the same meeting when the high risk scenarios are identified. Okay, that sounds good. I'll schedule the design review sometime within the next two weeks and the PHA a week or two after. Max, you can look into which PHA facilitator we should contact to facilitate our PHA. Sure, I'll let you know who I find. Most oil and gas process designs are based on existing facilities. However, even if a process is based on a previous design, success and safety is far from assured. That's because for every process that is in operation, there are poor design practices and unique operating conditions. After the design review, a HAZOP study allows the organisation to efficiently identify risk and prioritise focus on the highest risk scenarios. Without such an environment, it is difficult to systematically challenge assumptions and build strong logical arguments for good decisions. In a PHA, a HAZOP can be followed by a layer of protection analysis or LOPA and a safety integrity level study. These methodologies are used to analyse high-consequence scenarios and will be discussed in the next chapters of this course. Let's take a look at the key players involved in a HAZOP and the outcome you can expect. Thanks for coming to this PHA. The process for today's meeting is to start with a HAZOP and for any high-severity scenario, we will run a LOPA, which is a semi-quantitative method for assessing risk. Let's start with introductions. I'm Max, a facility engineer. I'm Amy, the process engineer. I'm Ian. I'm the senior process engineer and manager for this project. Is someone from operations coming? We can't start the meeting without them. Their perspective is essential. Hey everyone, sorry I'm late. I was at the plant for a morning safety meeting. Glad you could make it. Everyone was just introducing themselves. Okay, well I'm Bob. I'm the operations supervisor. Great. I'm Dan, and I will facilitate this meeting today. Today, we will focus on the P and I deeds and make decisions based on the company risk matrix. We'll identify risks based on abnormal process conditions, such as no flow or high flow. Let's get started. We've generated 18 recommendations. Given that they are implemented, working at this facility should be as safe as driving to work. Operations, do you think we can proceed with construction? Yes, I'm now confident with this design. Ian, are you confident in stamping the design? Yes. Once the recommendations are completed, we will issue the construction drawings. The target startup date in 16 months is still okay. 
A high-quality hazard and operability study, HAZOP, comes from a shared perspective. A systematic approach that everybody understands is needed. One that exhaustively identifies risks, facilitates logical discussions and enforces consistent risk-based decision-making. Good decisions need to start from the same point, talk about the same thing and have a common objective. A HAZOP is a good method to meet these challenges. In our next lesson, we will go through the logic structure of a HAZOP, which can be described using eight key building blocks. This will be foundational for your understanding of what differentiates a high-quality HAZOP from a poor one.